Hey guys, so this is the Scuba Pro Galileo heads up display unit. It's not entirely new to the market, it launched early last year in 2019, but we have just got the chance to use it for the first time while we're on a dive trip in Mexico, and I am absolutely astounded as to how far advanced the technology is for this day. Now, I could be wrong, please correct me if I am, but I can't think of anything else on the market which comes close to this. Yes, we had the Oceanic Data Mask around about 10 years ago, but let's be honest, that was quite bulky, quite clunky, it was heavy, and it was dog ugly. I can't think of anything else that comes close to this in terms of technology today. And for me, this is kind of one of those products, one of those pinnacle points where we see a turn in the future. If you look at the last 10, 20 years, everything has kind of been wrist-based. All your dive computers have kind of been worn on your watches. We've seen them move to tablets. We've seen them to move to wearable watches. Uh, and for me, the future will be some kind of bedded inlay in the actual mask screen itself, like some kind of Iron Man stroke Tony mask. For me, this is that turning point. Now, before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's dive in and take a look to see what it's all about. So the Scuba Pro Galileo heads up display unit. I'm going to refer to it as the HUD for the rest of this video because it's too much of a mouthful to keep saying. But it's marketed as a hands-free, mask-mounted, virtual heads-up display dive computer. Now the great thing about that is because it's a heads-up display, you don't need to use your hands during the dive, so you've always got your dive information available to see anytime during the dive. So this is absolutely perfect if you are, say, an underwater photographer, or a technical diver, or even a technical cave diver. Now before I got my hands on this, I was probably a little bit unduly against it. I wasn't convinced with the whole uh, not getting in the way of using a camera aspect, but in actual fact, reality was very, very different. I haven't once found this to be uh, a hindrance. Uh, I haven't found that it got in the way of using a camera. I found the display really, really clear. Um, and actually, if you want to see the information, you just kind of move your view to where the heads up display screen is and you can see everything that you need to see. And of course, if you do want to move it away from uh, the front of your face, it just swivels up. Uh, very, very simply on the bracket. The micro OLED display uses near eye optics to create a virtual screen which appears the distance of around about three feet or one meter away from the user's eye. I'm not quite sure of the technology it uses to do this. Uh, I don't know if it's like a convex or a concave lens, some kind of mad witchcraft, but what I do know is it's bloody clever. And the great thing is, is if you are a contact lens wearer or you have a prescription mask, you can still use the HUD. It's neutrally buoyant in the water, so you don't get that feeling if you've got a heavy weight on the front of your mask trying to pull it off your face, which is absolutely fantastic. The HUD is compatible with a range of Scuba Pro masks. Here I've been using it with this Synergy Twin, and it attaches to the supplied bracket that you fix to the mask with the supplied cable ties. If you go for the Scuba Pro Frameless Mask, it has an integrated holder and the Zoom Evo has an option to connect directly to the mask with a special mount. There are three main points of interest on the HUD. The first one is the silver spindle that has a screw end that attaches to the bracket. There are a number of movable washers on the spindle. These are about 4mm thick. These are there to help you align the HUD to make sure it sits correctly on the mask and to ensure the screen is at the optimum location in front of your eye. The second one is the viewing screen itself. This will sit just on the face of your mask lens with the center of the screen in line with the center of your eye. And the third one is the push wheel. On the opposite side of the spindle is the operation push wheel. Super simple to use, a short press to select, a long press to go back, and you turn the button to scroll the menus. And it's worth calling out that the menus are so easy to navigate and very straightforward to understand. Uh, just a quick couple of call outs before I list some of the features. The HUD is delivered to you in a deep sleep mode. Now to wake it from that deep sleep mode, you need to connect it to the power. And uh, once you've done that and you've woken the device, it won't go back into the deep sleep mode again. 
Uh, and also just to call out that when you are charging the unit uh, in normal operation, you need to have the unit turned on. I spotted that in the quick start guide. Uh, for some reason, you need to turn it on to charge it. Now the HUD is packed with a ton load of features. Uh, the menu system is very similar to what you'd find in a normal wrist one dive computer and the menu structure itself is effortless to navigate and very, very intuitive to use. You have a selection of two algorithms to choose from. You can either use the predictive multi-gas Borman ZHL16 ADT MB PMG or the Borman ZHL16 with gradient factors. God, that was a mouthful. Uh, for all you tech divers out there, it's worth calling out that the PMG offers micro bubble levels and profile dependent intermediate stops. Uh, the selectable modes on the HUD are scuba, gauge, apnea, and CCR, and it's also compatible with nitrox and trimix gases. It has options for eight selectable gases in scuba, plus oxygen and diluents in CCR, and two changeable set points in CCR diving. Uh, the HUD connects to a transmitter to provide you true remaining bottom time based on your breathing workload. Just a couple of call outs with the transmitter. When you enter into the pairing mode on the dive computer, you need to have the air on the tank turn off, so no pressure uh, on the transmitter. Once you're then into the pairing mode, you then pressurize the first stage by turning the tank on. Uh, and also when pairing, it's just a quick call out that you need to have the HUD very, very close to the transmitter on your tank. I literally had to have them side by side when I paired it. There wasn't a, a big range for me to pair it. But once it was paired, that was it, it was then done. The 3D full tilt compass is fantastic and it also has built in GPS for surface navigation. Now you'll get about 20 hours of dive time from a single charge and it's got a built in 2 gigabytes of memory which will store about 10,000 hours of diving. And a quick call out on the maximum operating depth which is set to 120 meters. Oh, and it's worth calling out that if you don't like the display colors, you can download alternatives, which is pretty cool. So actually using this, uh, I didn't find this intrusive at all. Uh, admittedly, I've probably spent the first two or three dives constantly staring at the display, but after a while, you actually kind of don't notice it when you don't need to look at it. You kind of forget it's there, and then when you do need your information for you, from your dive, you just kind of glance up and you've kind of got everything there that you need, which is absolutely fantastic. There are three dive screens you can choose from. You've got the classic, the light, and the graphic. The Classic was my go-to just because I preferred the layout with the compass. I can't for the life of me think why anyone would want to see a graphical chart of the dive while they're still on their dive, but hey, it's there if you want to see it. Only downside for me, I found the display a little bit dot matrix, I thought it was a little bit dated. If this had an uh, ammo LED display in this, this would absolutely be the bomb and would be anything else on the market. Hands down, would be anything else on the market. Other than that, I loved it, like I really loved it. This is a very honest and a huge step forward in the development of dive computers. The question is, is who's going to come up with that new genius idea which is going to top it? As I said earlier, I would love to see the information from my dive computer actually embedded into the lens of the mask, almost like a sort of matrix style thing. That would be really, really cool. Price-wise, at the time of recording, the Scuba Pro Galileo heads-up display unit is on sale for £1,126 at Mike's Dive Store. And if you purchase before the 29th of February 2020, you get a free, yes, a free £280 transmitter with it. That is a bargain. Now, if you're still with me, thanks ever so much for watching. As always, guys, if you've got any comments or questions, add them down below. And if you think anyone would like to see this video, do feel free to share it. And as always, if you like this video, if you've enjoyed it, give it a little thumbs up and think about hitting that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of our future videos. But for now, that's me done. Until the next time, my name's Richard and you've been watching Black Mountain Photography. Take care.